Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Henke Vibawa. I'm the uh, Executive Director of Indonesian Packaging Federation. Uh, I've been invited to talk uh, the, the first speech regarding the solutions in food and beverage packaging design towards circular economy, which is the, the main issue today. So the next uh, slide, please. So let, let me start with the trend of the packaging market today. As you may know that the trends uh, affecting the whole global packaging, especially uh, at this moment regarding the pandemic uh, situation, the greater consumer awareness of health and wellness. That is so important today. So, uh, and then the next is uh, regarding the recycling and environmental issue that we are talking uh, uh, further uh, later. And then of course, uh, the whole economy now, especially uh, the millennial uh, lifestyle, urbanization, the convenience, increasing of uh, disposable income. That is uh, the important things in the trend on the packaging as well. So the next. Let me start uh, talking about sustainable. Uh, life cycle thinking. This is a way of thinking that includes the economic, environmental and social consequences. And all the product or process over the entire life of uh, our uh, lifestyle today. Further, next. Optimizing the life cycle, we are talking about the life cycle assessment. So we are not talking only about the post-consumer packaging waste uh, management, but we are talking also about the uh, 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 energy consumption during the processing and uh, started from the take the material, uh, the feedstock, up to the uh, how you process the emission, the gas emission, which is today is also very much important regarding the climate change. That is, uh, the whole life cycle assessment that we have to know. Next. And talking about the sustainable packaging, we are talking about the consumer green, talking about scientific green, technology is very much important. And then government green. This is a matter of the regulation and legal uh, matter that that all about that we are doing, especially as well in the packaging of food and beverage, uh, that what we call business green. Next. Let me start with the, uh, the, the main, the basic function of the packaging. You know that the packaging is needed to protect the product. Uh, without the packaging, of course, you are not able to bring the whole uh, juices, water, and all the uh, liquid matter. Uh, you need you need the packaging. So uh, talking about the consumer information, the very very much regarding the brand awareness, uh, that is uh, what about, and then uh, portioning and handling because the uh, uh, packaging uh, as a, a transport uh, matter as well for the product. So you need uh, that packaging for the portioning and handling. And then, of course, regarding marketing and efficient logistic and everything. That is why we have to know about the packaging design. The next. Back to the FCA, the life cycle uh, assessment. Uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, it started from the input, from the feedstock up to the uh, end uh, matter. And uh, up to the uh, end of the uh, product itself. So uh, talking about that, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, we have to know regarding the energy consumption, the emission uh, into the nature. Next. Next. So the, the whole equation starts with the, uh, what we are uh, uh, talking about the basic function, but the next is, uh, regarding the minimization of the environmental impacts. This is the co core requirement uh, in a matter of the eco-design especially. Next. 
So the whole, the whole equity science and packaging is a matter of heuristic, the whole uh, table of uh, complexity, actually. Uh, talking about the resource efficiency, talking about renewable raw material, talking about the design for recycling, uh, uh, how to optimize uh, take back and waste separation and everything. So that the packaging have to be uh, also uh, from the uh, beginning, uh, we have to, uh, 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 of course, uh, require in the, in, the, in, the, in the packaging matter. Next. As we are talking today uh, regarding the food and beverage, uh, uh, especially in the beverage, uh, we know that uh, especially now, uh, uh, a lot of uh, 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 plastic bottle uses, uh, especially we are talking about PET bottle, polyester bottle. So uh, and that kind of bottle, uh, uh, we, we need the labels as the, as the packaging, uh, as I mentioned before, is a matter of the information transfer and uh, the graphic design regarding the brand awareness and everything. So the labels actually in the market that you, you may find is a wet glue applied, gum, gum paper, wrap around, pressure sensitive adhesive, shrink sleeve in mold in smart packaging has become important as well. But we are talking today uh, in this uh, session regarding shrink sleeve which is, is a very much uh, growing in the market as well. Next. And for the label, you need uh, all kind of uh, ability uh, to print, uh, whether with the uh, conventional or even with the digital printing today. Next. So talking about the sleeve, as you may see uh, some picture here, you see that the shrink sleeve having the uh, benefit to have the whole uh, label uh, covered into the uh, bottle itself. We lost the sound. Hi. Hanky, Mr. Hanky, please check your cell phone. Please check your cell phone. I'm calling you. I I, I see the problem because I cannot hear I cannot hear his voice right now. So I'm talk I'm trying to talk to him. Mr. Hanke, I know your presentation is very good. I listened to them before in this morning. So Hanke, please. Oh, Hanke is not listening to me. Are you calling him? Okay. Okay, my dear attendees, please wait for a minute. We will try to solve this problem. We'll try to call Mr. Hanke now. Mr. Hanke, could you please answer my phone? Hello, Mr. Hanke. Oh, see, Hanky is now seeing this. Sorry, Mr. Hanky, we lost your voice now. We lost your voice in, we lost. Oh, maybe your phone went to sleep mode something. We cannot hear you voice anymore. Hello. No, no, Hanky, please reconnect your, your cell phone, please. Ah, no, not yet, no. No, 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 not yet, not yet. Yes, no, not yet. I can hear only from the phone, but not in the webinar. So please try to, uh, yes, try to log in again. Hello. 
Hank, Mr. Hanky, we lost we lost the connection of the of your cell phone. Mr. Hanky, we lost the connection of your cell phone. You have to end a uh, re login in your cell phone. Mr. Hanky, on your cell phone. Yeah, sorry. Your cell phone didn't working well now. No, sorry, no. So I'm afraid I will I have to move on to to my. I uh, I don't hear you. Do you hear? Did you hear from Mr. Hanky? No, sorry, we cannot do that. No. So, oh, sorry, Hanky. So let's move on to our next speaker. Okay, but you still hear me, right? Okay. Hello, Hanky. No voice at all. That's okay. Um, I'll sure. No sound from Mr. Hanky. I'm so sorry for that. Maybe there's an internet problem with that. That's okay. We try to connect him later. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to our next presentation. Okay. So since Mr. Hanky is not coming back with us just now, maybe we should let the or Tony to do the presentation first, and we'll do the panel later. Okay. Hoping we can reconnect Mr. Hanky and Mr. Hoxson later. So, Tony, is that okay with you? Tony, please go online to me. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi, Tony. We Hi. see you there. Hi. We don't hear you yet. You, could you please turn on your microphone? Oh, I, I, I hear your voice now. Yes, yes, already, yes. Great. Great. Okay, so we all can see this video, right? Let's have a small question, small survey. Let's see if you uh, understand what the video is about, uh, if you pay attention to the details to the uh, video. And please scroll, scroll down to this survey and see if you can answer these questions. I can see people are answering this question already. Yes. While you're doing this, let me have a short introduction of DataSyn. Since DataSyn is a specialized in the manufacturing and development of sleeving machine, we would love to hear from Mr. Tony Huang to share his insights later as an expert to talk about the topic innovative string sleeve solutions. Okay, I see several people ask, answering this already. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Hello. Yes. Well, I see people are answering this poll already because a while ago I forgot to turn on my microphone, so the volume. And see, oh, thank you for answering this summary, this question. Oh, so a while ago I said, since Desasin is specialized in the manufacturing and development of sleeping machine, we would love to hear from Mr. Tony Wong to share his insights as an expert to talk about the topic innovative string sleeve solutions. And this topic also related to the topic that Mr. Hanke talked a while ago about the circulation economy and also some recycle problem. And also the point is the string sleeve solution. That's what we all want to hear right now. So I can see several people asking, uh, answering this question already. We still have like 20 minutes before we finish this survey. So please do, please do cooperate uh, with this survey. Okay, 10 more minutes, I mean 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, now I'm going to end this voting. I will share the result. As you, can see, we have As, as you can see, we have one third of our attendees to answer this poll. So this six percent. Okay. And you can see, okay, company full name and also the speaker. Yes, the perfect name, uh, the, the correct number for number one, of course, is data sync group. Okay. And second question, what's the max speed of the high performance? It will be 100 to 1000 uh, 1, BPM. And the, for the uh, uh, for the answer for the number three question, products of Daisen are 
film and string slip machine and printing materials three of them so if you answer three of three of the questions you will get the correct answer so now you have the basic knowledge of day testing let me pass this presentation to mr tony Wong. hi tony Wong. hello hello everyone yeah, yeah we hear your voice yeah, yes we could so bye bye see you later Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony from uh, Dancing. I'll be the one presenting the innovative string sleep solution. Okay. Uh, firstly, I will be doing a brief introduction about our company. And we have three factories and two in Taiwan and one in China. And we are established in 1985. And we have 200 plus of employees and marketed in 80 plus more uh, 80 plus countries and then um, here's some reference for our uh, business around the world you can see we are we have uh, a lot of a lot of presence in many different regions can you please speak up with the microphone okay okay um here's some of our partners uh in different regions and you can see uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, OEC, and some uh, Nestle and Dabu in India. So we have a lot of experience uh, with a lot of large brands. Firstly, I will be sharing some of the market trends right uh, with the shrink sleeve. So according to the Fortune Business Insight, the shrink sleeve label machine will dominate because of their uh, advantage. They allow uh, wide space for graphics, use of bright colors, and offer durability among others. Uh, the, the sleeve labels market was valued at uh, 10.37 billion USD in 2019 and ex expected to reach 15.55 billion by 2025. And uh, can everyone hear me? No? Oh, I, I can hear can, you. Can you? Okay. But it's soft. <laughs> okay, then uh, there's some of market trends that uh, we should be uh, we take care of. And firstly will be the unique design because consumers are seeking customized packaging and see personalization as a premium service no sound okay they say I, hear I, I hear you yeah hear but you. some people say they can't hear me maybe you can refresh I, okay I'll, I'll refresh refresh I'm a presenter now. And Tony is a presenter too. Only use this one. Stop. Okay, I'll with the PowerPoint. Okay. So, the market trends, okay? Well, firstly, the unique design was one of the uh, trends that are very important for the current market. So, uh, the customization and customer packaging will be the uh, the most important for the current market. Good, good, good. Yeah, good. How's the clarity? Just good. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, the convenience. Consumers are looking for products that are uh, not only quick to pre prepare and also easy to consume. 
They want products that are easy to carry and also easy to open. Then, okay. Yes, keep, keep talking. Then the sustainability in Asia Pacific, the consumer are seeing the value of the sustainable packaging and eco friendly packaging would mean the use of edible material over recycled plastic. So this is the trend right now happening in the market. Then all the brands are looking for ways to engage with consumers and increase return of market investment, cut costs, and auto optimize the supply chain. And connect digital campaign to the real product and reduce time to market. And finally, and then, uh, how do you choose time to market? And firstly, we have a lot of supply for film, printing, and machine at the same time. So, this uh, is Tony, I have to stop you right there because the volume is not good. So okay. I have. To... Okay, could you please give your microphone here. Bring your microphone here. Please okay. stay in my in my spot. Okay. Please join my spot. Hello, everybody. I will not. I will now inviting Tony Wong to sit in my host spot <laughs> and do the presentation to you. Oh. That also okay. yeah, your microphone. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, okay, so I, I don't need to hear, right? Okay. Okay, uh okay, this we, we get to the digital printing part. Why why digital digital printing uh is good for uh reducing time to market? Because the it uh, it doesn't need to make the plate to for the printing. And you can just change the design whenever you just need to send an electrical file to your printer and they can print it straight away. So this is uh, one of the reasons that you can reduce the time to market. So the next one, uh, we get to the downgoing of the film. Now it, it, it allows, to, allows you to reduce the cost and also allow you to improve the, the image of the brand as this help for going uh, going green. Okay. So what's the thickness? For now, uh, we recommend to reduce the thickness from either from 50 micron or 40 micron to 30 micron. Why not 20 micron? We can also do 20 micron, but now the most uh, commercialized thickness will be around 30 micron because you can, you can hardly get uh, 20 micron from the Supply and also it will be very expensive. Only that thirty micron uh is actually uh will reduce your cost and is uh you can get it uh, in for from many of the suppliers. Okay. Uh, then we get to the films for a different application, the white film for dairy product. For this kind of film, uh, you can uh you have better blockage of UV light and also. This protects the content inside the bottles. So you can also uh, increase the shelf life of your products. And we have the low temperature shrink film. This allows you to uh, shrink the label uh, at the lower temperature, which can prevent your product from damage uh, from heat because some of the product is very heat sensitive. I can show you some video here. Uh, 
Okay, sorry, it's not here. Not this one. Uh, it will be this one. This is a video for the milk powder for very heat sensitive uh, product. Okay, sorry, it was very short videos. Get back to the presentation. And uh, uh, here is the, some high shrinkage film. For we can do shrinkage up to normally seventy five, but we have a special film that can go up to seventy eight percent. So here is some uh, examples that uh, that we do with a high shrinkage film. Because high shrinkage film is required when you have a large difference in diameter of the bottles. And, uh, okay. Okay, I'll check the video. Uh, there's some. Yes, yeah, stop. Check. Okay. Then we get to how we uh how we do the quality control for our string stick. We can either do it by sensor or camera with uh, different types of rejection um mechanism. We can go up to the, the speed of seventy uh seven hundred and fifty bottles per minute, and we can do tape connection label position and presence of the label and also other function can be customized depends on the situation then why string sleeve firstly because you if you can use the same container but just to change the string sleeve on the full body sleeve and you can uh save a lot of uh, storage cost because you just basically just use the same can, but when you change the string stiff completely, you, 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 your product look completely different. Okay, then the protection of the product. Uh, string stiff protects from UV, UV light, which we talked about before, but you're also avoiding the scratch of the printing, uh, on the, on the container because the, the ink is, is printed inside the string stiff. So, when uh, the product is being transported, it will not get uh, uh, damaged, you will not get scratched while if that, uh, uh, while the transportation, yeah. Okay, next one, we will get to the uh, perforation. Perforation enc encouraging the recycle and will be easier for promotion purpose. It, it helps a uh, consumer to tear off the label to help the recycle process and the other purpose will be the part that you tear off from the label you can also use as like a promotional uh, tool you can uh, they have to keep the the tear off parts for for the drawing of the winning price that's one of the application then uh, how do we reduce the transportation cost some of the my customer that uh they have uh, uh switching some of the PET bottles to aluminium bottles, but they also do it do, do this with the uh, string sleeve. Why they change to aluminium bottle? Because they they focus on the premium products, and uh and they use the this kind of uh, premium product with with string sleeve. This can uh also reduce the thickness of the string sleeve as well then uh, also the PET has no problem with the sustain sustainability of the packaging uh, I know you might have some question about the P recyclability of PTG but this actually have new PET that can be recycled I will talk about data okay and here is some uh, Special shrink stick solution for cans. Uh, for this solution, we use shrink sleeve and sell adhesive label together at once. You can see on the top, there's one 
a piece of uh, self adhesive label sticking on the top and and all the uh, whole case covered by string sleeve. When you want to drink the uh, the content inside, you just need to twist the twist the string sleeve at the perforation at the top. And when if you cannot finish the string, you can even put the cover back onto the cans. This is a very special uh, solution for the cans. So it, it makes sure you have good sanitary sanitization of the products, protect from the dust and other pollution. Okay, now we get to our core, core business of a testing. That's the thing. And we have film, printing, and machinery. Firstly, we have Votogravure printing that has 16 color. Uh, we prop so we can properly uh, fulfill uh, any color requirement from the customers. And this is some of the application for Votogravure printing. You can do cap seal or PP labeling, shrinkable preforms, adhesive shrinkable labels, and some embossed tactile printing, and two side printing labels. Okay. And here's to show you some of the advantage of digital printing. You, it, uh, firstly, if you have frequently changed motif, or personalized label, or you accept small quantity of order, or short, or even you require short delivery. And the other most important part is that no costly play. This can save you a lot of cost as well. Here is some uh, examples of digital printing. So you can see one of sample in the middle that uh. You they integrate newspaper with the water bottles because so this allows you to drink the what drink water while also after drinking you can also read the news on the label. So this is probably a innovative uh, solution for, for you to consider. Okay, then we get to the inbox tech inbox tactile printing. The embossed tactile printing is that uh, it gives you uh, not only visual sensation, but also a tactile feeling. So it increases the tactile memory of the consumer. And you can see the photo on the right. Uh, you can add UV uh, light, UV uh, ink onto the labels. So it glows at a dark place. So this is also another method uh, to to extend out from the uh, the market. Okay, then uh, for cap, uh, this is some of the packaging types that we could do uh, with our labeling machine, uh, string sleeve machine. And and firstly, we, I will be uh, uh, introduction introducing our uh, smallest machine that we we can run up to 150 bottles per minute but it, it has a special uh, application that allows you to put a tear tap on top of the cap capsule normally you cannot see this capsule uh, this tear tap on the market normally you ha you have to use your nail to open the capsule but this uh, feature allows you to tear off the capsule without using the nails. So it's very easy for tearing. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll show you some uh, samples later. And firstly, this one was is the machine that can run up to 1000 BPM. And it also can run with the uh, standard material for 30 micron or 20 micron. Okay. And then we get to this one is for large diameter products. We can, for this machine, we can run up to diameter of 200 millimeter and max speed will be 100, uh, 150 bottles per minute.
Okay, then we get to the accumulated unwinder. This allows you to change the reel without stopping uh, the machine. I will show you a video that we do with Coca-Cola. So this part is the accumulation. It allows you to splice the label without stopping the machine. Running at 450 ppm. Okay. And we get to get back to our PowerPoint. And this is uh, the multi reel unwinder. This allows uh, to put on aerials, but this aerials is pre-connected before you put onto the trolley. And this unwinder will only stop when you finish the all the reels. So this can increase your productivity significantly. Reduce your label changing time. And then we have a special feature for over overlap machine. This allows your label to overlap to the bottom of the bottles to make uh, make your product with a premium look because uh, you, you see you can see the bottom you cannot see it, see the uh, the bottle when it's all covered up completely by the labels. This is one of the projects that we do with Dabu in India, and then we get to the bottle orientator. This is to, uh, we use camera to orientate the bottle to a certain direction that we, then we do the sleeving. So this is when you want to match the shape of the bottle and with your design of the labels. And here's some, uh, examples of the project that we do with the orientation. So this tool is, is a, the actual project that we do with a customer. So they want to match this part with uh, the curve on the on the bottles as always. So they have to orientate every bottle with the same direction. Also why they, they need to orientate because before the string wrapping, you can see on the right bottom picture, you have to orientate the other bottle in the same direction. Then that this enable them to uh, shrink wrap. Otherwise, they cannot shrink rip if it's all in different direction. Okay. And this is other project that we do with the uh, energy drink. So you can see all these uh, curves. So they want to make sure it, this lion logo is always at the same uh, same direction when they they, they so they when they uh hold up for drinking. So you can show it from the side. So it. Every time you have a consistent uh, brand image when you drink the the bottles. Okay, this is some of the actual samples. So the the one on the left is one of the dairy product that we do uh, with a big group in China. That is a uh, yogurt product. They have a uh, two ears. They have to match the label with the bottles. Okay, that. Okay, this is the orientation. Then we get to the data collection for industrial 4.0. Uh, for this, we can do OPCUA signal exchange protocol. This uh, is widely used in European uh, turnkey company. And because it's easier for data collection and easier control of production line, and the most importantly, it's a real-time presentation of the production data. Okay, finally, we get to uh, our labeler. Uh, for our labeler, this is OPP labeler. We can run up to 700 BPM, and we can do both round bottles or square bottles. And it's full servo, so it's very easy for change over. And we also can do non-stop label feeding for this machine. And it's very easy for maintenance. Okay, 
finally uh, we get to the end of my PowerPoint. Okay, thank you for everyone. And if you want more info information, please uh, see the contact information below. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm so sorry. Holly. So I will head yeah. out to check. Okay, okay. I, I, will, I like to yeah, invite you to join my host squad. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you so it's a great presentation, you know, Tony. Thank you. And you know, I saw a lot of questions raised in the chat room, you know. Yes. I know you focused on your presentation, yes. but you have you noticed that? Yes. There are several questions. Yes. So what about let me publish the, some questions for you to answer then uh by your yeah in person? Yes. Like uh yes. I I like to raise let's do do the questions one by one, okay? Okay. Because there are some questions uh your assistant already answered already, yeah. but it's in very short. So let's see if we can see there's a question. What should you do one best? Uh, we can do up there. What's the... Let's do the Richard's question, okay? Okay. What about this one? What's the challenge? Okay, you read the question. <laughs> okay. What's the challenge of sustainability for the plastic packaging supply for the brand owner? So for this... Uh... Uh, I think the converter must be more aggressive uh, for for uh, 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 introducing uh, oh, more aggressive uh, for investing on the new recyclable recyclable uh, material because now um, all the, the the now the re new recyclable uh material uh is not yet uh in the trade in the trade off point that is have a uh, lower enough low enough cost for for the for the uh brand owner to to be uh adopted yes that's one thing uh because they are not they are still far from being cost and Barrier efficient, efficient for the their new product designs, and because they are, the reason that is that most of the new innovation is still in the early stage, and in the research process, so they will use the costly material. Okay, also, and many uh brand owner now is aiming for quick wins like uh, uh reducing the thickness of the material oh. to. So this can, they can do this by, they can do this to reduce the cost as in the shortest time. No, yeah, that's very important. Okay, yeah. and they also trying to think, uh, to rethink their logistic, in the their de delivery trends, chains. Oh, yes. And also try to change their packaging design, which is to uh in response of the sustainability use issue. Oh really? Okay. Oh, that's yes. all the challenges might be here yes, in the yes. market, right? So, yeah. but but the uh the manufacturer and the retailer is facing problems like uh they have to find a balance between recyclability mm -hmm. and carbon footprint mm -hmm. and the food waste. Oh. Yes. So any package and also all, all the change in the packaging design will also change the overall. Branding strategy of of the company, so this will also make the uh, branding strategy more complex for all all the all the brand owner as well. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. so I think this important part is that the brand owner must be must be considering um, building a more close relationship with all the uh, suppliers in order to achieve. Uh, the sustainability and cost at the same time. So, um, I think this is the very, this is the most important part ah, to deal with the uh, challenges. You talk a lot yeah. of challenges here, yes, really, yes. in the market. If you pay attention enough, you can see lots of uh, market trends here in, yes. in his answer. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, before we start, next question, I would like to make you focus on the screen a little bit. See? Yeah. Okay. Let's share the screen and put, and always okay. face in front of yeah, our yeah, yeah, yeah. camera. I know you're not 
I'm getting used to uh, get on the camera all the time. Like yes, me. that's okay. It's fine. It's okay. So what about let's pick another question? Okay. Let's see if, if you can see advantage of string state packaging comparing to Jenny. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Let me publish for you. Okay. We have a question asked from Jenny. What is the advantage of string sleeve packaging compared to other packaging materials used? Would you like to answer that yes. question? Okay, firstly, yeah, great question. it will be the mm. uh, 60 degree of uh, graphics. Oh. So give you a more space for your marketing uh, promotions. Do you have any sample yes. there? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think every <laughs> every single one is the string sleeve, so it's the same. Ah. So, so you can see, you can do the printing 360 degree mm. for if you only have a uh, self adhesive labels you can only do for flat service and it's limited space yeah, yeah. so this is one of the example and like also it. you you protect your content by blocking the uv light which i talked about before and also uh, you reduce the possibility of uh, printing getting damaged while transportation and also uh you can uh do uh like a perforation for promote promotion purpose or recyclable recyclable uh purpose and also it's easier to tear off, tear off the label and this is this will help the recycle recycling uh process and also uh this less waste compared to self adhesive adhesive labels because it does not have the backing liners as the uh, as the labels okay. so all this as, and also the average cost of string label is also uh lower than self adhesive label so i think all this advantage up to as is a uh, very obvious advantage uh, advantage, advantage yeah, yeah. Compared to other type uh, of labels yeah, yeah. i think so before we move on to the next question, I would like to announce, I have a, a webinar announced later. We will finish this Q&A question. I see there's still several questions there. We will try to finish them all, or maybe you can save a little bit later. And also after the Q&A time, we will let Mr. Hanky to finish his presentation because we connect to Hanky already. He told me that they have a happy run. So the internet problem uh, caused by the rain and just uh, lost the connection. So after the Q&A part, we will have uh, Hanky's presentation and we will do the panel discussion. We will invite Dr. Hoxson to join us as well to ask several questions to Tony, Hoxson and Hanky. So please stay tuned with us. So what about let's answer another question? Yeah, uh, I think uh, mo most people will be interested in uh, yeah, which one? The question of sustainability of the string labels. Oh, I want to share one information yeah, I for the uh, things the... Okay, what is the available packaging material? Environmental friendly. This is asked from Amber. What are the available packaging materials in the market that are cost saving and environment friendly? Oh, you, you mentioned a little bit about cost saving a while ago, right? Yes. Yeah. You can yeah. simply answer okay. that question. For this yeah. question, I have to say, uh, for this stage, it's very difficult to achieve cost saving and oh. environmental friendly yeah. right now because the the scale of the economy of the new material is not big enough. But it will eventually drive the price down after all the all the con uh, consumption uh, increases. But now I want to introduce you some of the uh, material that will they can be used for sustainability uh, purpose. Uh, for material, they have material like OPS and POA and the new type of PET. But firstly, for OPS, it's very sensitive to heat and it's very hard to uh, for transportation. So for this product now, it's not very common, but it's mainly used in Japan. And then for POA, it says it's compostable, but it's actually not that easy to compost because it requires a special commercial uh, composting facility to do this compost, uh, to let this 
a material compost. Yeah. So it's not actually uh, uh, available in every every region. Yeah, that's not practical to everywhere. Yes, yeah. but now there's a new uh, uh, material is modified PET, and then you you can use this kind of PET with the uh, uh, washable ink. So this allows the label and the PET flag flex to be uh, recycled together without contamination, because this is the new technology for the ink and the material as well. Another solution for PET is that there's a low density PET. So this allows the PET to float on water. This is also facilitate the recycling process. So this is the um, uh, three new uh, solution for for the sustain sustainable issues. Okay. Oh my God! While you answering this question to, uh, to from Amber, I was checking the chat room and I see there are several questions there. You are yes. very it's very popular, you know. Yes. So I I think maybe we try to answer like two more and we will uh, go to the Hanky's presentation. Yeah. Okay. Like, no perhaps, problem. Yeah. Because uh, there are several questions there from Matt, from Brandon, from Kenny, okay. Matt. Oh, Matt. Okay, let's answer the question from Matt. Okay, because yes. first thing first. Okay, Matt, uh, Matt asked the question first. Okay. Matt, Matt asked, uh, "What do we need to be aware of when switching to sustainable materials?" What about that question? Yes, Tony. Uh, okay. For this issue, uh, it's really good that everyone is uh having a goal to to use sustainable sustainable material. But oh, yeah, firstly. There's there's some uh points that you have to be careful with this this uh trend. Oh, Firstly, right. you have to you have to make sure you don't reduce the packaging too much and resulting your uh product inside get damaged because of the barrier problem, and this will increase your overall cost and harming your brand perception. Mm -hmm. This is the first one. The second one, you have to consider all sustainable factors of your materials because for instance for instance the paper typically uh takes more water and energy to produce than plastic actually and while it might be easier to uh recycle but it, it, it will be less sustain sustainable overall when the large picture is examined so, okay this is the third, second one then the third one is that uh, the re recycled material need to be clean, convenient, safe, and sterilized. Okay. Here. And then the last one, the origin of the material must be confirmed, and and it must follow the ISO ISO standard. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's the. Some point that I want to remind for the sustain sustainable materials. Yeah, it's really okay. detailed, you know. As attendees, you you can see and on the screen. Actually, I can see is Tony actually prepared a lot of material to answer to the presentation. But because of the time limit, he really want to give everything to all of you. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. uh, try to answer another question. And what about, uh, okay. Let me talk to Tim. Tim, Hank is okay. Okay. Sure, let's answer another question, okay? Maybe from Brandon? From Brandon? Yes, yes I'm interested to know. Um, cost saving. I think I will see if there's some more other questions. Yeah, other questions like this. What, okay. what else do you want to answer? Because we try to look at uh, those many questions that Tony would like to pick to answer, okay? okay. There's several questions there. Okay, I think, okay, with the uh, top. Okay, very close. Okay, this one. Yeah. This one? Yeah, this one. Okay, what about from Brendan Lim? Uh, Brendan Lim asked, I'm very interested to know various cost saving methods, always cost saving methods in level sleeve packaging. Could you please tell me more? Level sleeve packaging? Do we call that level sleeve packaging? Uh, it should be just sleeve, uh, string sleeve packaging. A string sleeve yeah, packaging. String sleeve, yeah. Oh. And uh, firstly, for, for, for cost. Now, I said it before, not everyone will be uh, the downgoing of the film. 
is the most uh, people that choose to do. So this will, we have calculated this before. This, if you have large volume, this can uh, save a lot of your profit. If it's not only save your profit, also increase your brand image. So the down gouging is one of the the points to for for the saving cost. Then uh, use the uh, suitable size of the label. So because some uh, supplier they are not really a professional and and for the string sleeving machine, so they might choose a bigger bigger string sleeve size. So but this will be a extra cost for you. Then okay, then we get to the the other point is that purchase a high high quality machine, string sleeving machine. To ensure your productivity, as uh as your pro uh production efficiency increases, you reduce the the cost of uh, labels, which is wasted. Uh, when when the machine is is not running uh in a good efficiency, so this is also another uh point to be be careful. And then uh the string sleeve can extend your shelf life. So this, if you increase your shelf life, you will reduce the, the food waste. So this also can reduce your cost. This is another uh, point to, to, uh, to consider. Yeah. And, and make sure the packaging of the string steep reel is properly packed. So you will not get damaged uh, while transportation. So this also reduces uh, the waste of the reel. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think there's some points yeah, of the, of for the yeah. reducing the cost of the sink yeah. seat. Any concerns yeah. about the cost down, <laughs> the, yes. the, the cost saving problem? Yes. Yeah. Do you have, want to answer uh, any other questions so far? Uh, because I would like to, well, Tim, thank you, okay? Yes. So what about we, because uh, we are several questions and they're still increasing, but I I don't want to Mr. Hanky to wait too long. Yes, yes, okay, yeah. So I I suggest that uh while while we do the Q and A time, Mr. Hanky, if you can hear me, you can try to get back to uh, your connection with us. I would like to look for if you are there. Yeah, I can see Hanky is there. Mr. Hanky, if you would like to, please try to join us uh, during the pa in the panel panel time. As also, we have Dr. Joseph Hoxson with us already. And please get ready so far. Let me let Hanky finish his presentation just yet, okay? So while we wait for the Mr. Hanky to get back with us, let's try to answer another question. Uh, if you if you like to, right? If yeah. we uh, while we, while we wait, Mister Hanky, okay. let's say we can. Yeah, yeah. Is it possible this to uh, using thirty microns for okay. fast? Okay, let me publish this yeah. question. It's from Dumont Dama Santi Aldri. I hope I pronounced your name well. Your question is: Is it possible to use in thirty microns so for fast speed square bottle? and printing oh that's hard and what is the range minimum thickness if we are using 30 micro okay try to answer that question okay question. Uh, question. of course this is possible to use the 30 micro for fast speed but for fast speed we we mean we can run up to 600 bpm for this kind of square bottle with a 30 micro film and also for square bottle it's very important for orientation as well because you have to make sure the label stays uh, at the right place. Otherwise, your label uh, design one might be misalignment with the bottle shape. And then what is the range of minimum thickness if we are using 30 micron? What do you mean by range of minimum thickness? What's the range minimum thickness? Uh, Maybe like how thin? Yeah. I'll but it, it already say if you are using micro. So I think it, for now it's better to stay with thirty micron because of the film supplier cannot cannot supply uh, the film under thirty micron right now, and it's very costly right now. So oh, okay. so we will stay with the thirty micron. So while you're answering this question, hello, Mr. Hanky, I see you get online with us already. 
Yeah. Oh. I'm ready. So glad to have to hear your voice again. <laughs> so let's uh, give uh, Mr. Tony to have a short break while you do your presentation as well. Okay. Before this page. Okay. This one. I can I can uh, continue. Yeah, you can continue, and I'll let Tony to uh, have a little I think, break. Okay. okay. You Thank talk you. a lot during the time. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Hank, I think I think it I think it's not so many so many uh, presentation. Some some Tony already giving uh, also some uh, points that uh, I like to talk. Okay, anyway, okay. you have the floor now. You can please continue your presentation. Thank you. We all, all right. hear them all. So Yeah, okay. Just uh, like Tony was saying, the benefits of full body string sleeve is a uh, high impact and shelf appeal, of course, uh, more innovative and decorative for the bottles, uh, full 330 degrees uh, of promotional and marketing opportunity, and uh, definitely uh, the way you print and uh, that kind of material that we are talking about, the PET, it's a UV protection and scratch resistant uh, necessary. And then the moisture and proof labels and uh, su suitable for any container on one stop recycling. That is uh, very much important that we are talking about. Uh, the next, uh, the next, how to use them. Of course, uh, you have to print uh, uh, by the label converter and then do uh, uh, going into the plastic and glass bottle manufacturer if that glass, for example, but uh, definitely we are talking about the sustainability here. So in one mono material, uh, PET together that you can straight away uh, recycle. That is uh, very much important. Uh, and then uh, uh, what I want to show later is uh, regarding this one. I think this. Uh, this also I have uh, showed before that uh, this is a good example. Uh, Nestle have a commitment uh, to so-called the Ellen MacArthur's uh, circular economy pledges. This is a more than 400 organization already signed the pledges. So uh, they, they committed to uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, waste by use, use uh, reuse the, the recycled material. So for example, for bottle, uh, I'm talking about PET before, uh, there will be uh, at least in uh, 2025, they will use 25% of uh, our pad, recycled pad, for example. And you may see in the last, the shrink film as well. So it will uh, reuse it again after recycle. So uh, the next, uh, uh, I believe that uh, that's clear. We are moving from the so-called linear economy, uh, from take and make uh, waste linear into the circular economy, that we can reuse it again. That is uh, more important. Uh, this year, we are not talking only about the waste management, but also about resources management, that you can reduce uh, uh, use, uh, uh, use of or, or take it, take it uh, the, the, the crude oil and even the natural product uh, uh, we will use. Uh, the next, uh, uh, beside that, okay, this is how you do. There's a lot of technology today for recycle. Uh, in terms of plastic, uh, usually uh, we use uh, mechanical recycling, but uh, today we, we can use also uh, uh, so chemical recycling. <laughs> Uh, so the last, the last, uh, uh, what I like to show uh, for this uh, presentation that uh, the objective of recycling and reuse in, in the circular economy is to reduce the natural raw materials and natural resources. As I saw, as I said, it's a resource management and assist the government in the prevention of pollution, energy saving, and provide income to the participating stakeholder, like scavengers uh, uh, in Indonesia, for example, we, uh, we call it waste picker, so, uh, the daily worker who uh, earn money from the daily uh, waste picking. 
this is uh, definitely is a, a kind of uh, uh, employment as well. Savings and foreign exchange, because you don't have to transfer uh, between ways. Uh, you can use your own ways in the country and uh, uh, to recycle it. So raw material will never run out because we do that uh, reuse it again a couple times. You know that PET, for example, you can recycle and reuse until at least uh, nine to ten times. That that is a uh, is very much uh, uh, important. So the last uh, uh, for that uh, presentation, I uh, encourage you for that purpose. We have to collaborate to innovate and accelerate everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Hello? That was, uh, I would say, truly inspiring. Uh, and mm -hmm. I hope that uh, the industry will follow your advices. Um, so now I would like to invite also uh, Dr. Joseph Hoxon to j turn on his camera. Um, and to we will do our panel discussion. So um, the first question that so let me introduce I mean maybe reintroduce a little bit to to people who join maybe in the in the middle uh, we are hosting now a panel discussion with uh, Mr. Henke Wibawa the executive director of Indonesian Packaging Federation uh, Mr. Tony Huang who sits here with me uh, executive assistant of uh, the ASIN, uh, Packaging Technology and Dr. Joseph Ross Jackson uh, vice president of Asia Packaging Federation. Um, very glad to have you here today. So the first question that we will have is what opportunities are there for the plastic packaging industry or end users post COVID-19? And I would like um, to, uh, to direct this question firstly to Mr. Henke. What is your opinion about this? Hello, Mr. Henke. Henke, can you hear us? Okay, uh, perhaps we can first then have an answer from Mr. Uh, from Dr. Joseph Ross Jackson. Could you tell us what opportunities are there for the plastic packaging industry or end users after this situation will um, subside? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The team. Uh, uh, and also to our guests and attendees here right now. You know, this uh, uh, pandemic affected not just the packaging industry, but a whole lot of industry in general. But in every uh, situation like this, there are also some other silver uh, lines, but uh, as we uh, are saying, food packaging will be there. As people need to, and food packaging is there because we need it to keep the food fresh, uh, uh, sustainable, and uh, and also for the shelf life. Therefore, we will not see a decrease in food packaging, but there will be some evolution. As we can see because now dining in restaurants are going. Down. Mostly now are in the big house, big house deliveries. So we can now see opportunities in development of packaging in this uh, in this sense. So our restaurant owners or they will not have to put their their, their items in food packaging. Uh, sorry, Doctor Joseph. Uh, if I can interrupt, do you have perhaps um? A separate uh, headphone uh, because there is there is a, uh, some feedback on the on the um, on the sound. So if you would have a um, if you could use another microphone, that would be um, that would be beneficial for the audience, I think, because they could understand you better. Hello, uh, is it clear now? It's better now. Yes, much okay. better. Okay, uh, do I have to repeat the. What I was what I was mm -hmm. saying because of the, mm -hmm. of the pandemic, um, there are changes in ways that that people are living right now. The restaurants they don't have the same dining capacity as before, 
So most will be now in takeouts and deliveries. So development in food packaging will now be in that trend, easy to carry, um, you know, different types of, uh, of uh, structures to keep the fresh for deliveries and other takeout items. So this is what I see um, because of what happened right now in the pandemic issue that we're having. Mm, I see. As I said, the food packaging will always be because people need to eat and it keeps the food fresh and keeps up for the shelf life of the food. That is true. Um, Mr. Shani, what do you think about this topic? Um, for this topic, I think uh, converters must be corrected uh, for like sustainability issue as the consumer demands and regulatory requirement multiply because uh, uh, this the computer should uh, consider to expanding but not entirely uh, replacing the current product offerings with uh, new eco-friendly options because the well because the sustainable sustainable single use product and other recycled material are now still at the premium uh, cost right now so by the introduction of the new tech technology and the consumer dis demand will eventually drive down the, the prices and this will open up the market growth and also uh, the investment opportunities and the manufacturer and the retailer is, is now discovering that uh, it's very important to build a relationship with either uh, their upper upper supplier or even the recyclable recycler and also some of the um, other uh, downstream or upstream uh, uh, suppliers and this re uh, opportunity could emerge for the supplier they can agile agile uh, that to quickly expand the innovation capability. And also the other problem is that the, the waste collection systems and the recycling uh, menu, the recycler are not in place at the required uh, scale as the packaging market grows. So this could be another uh, opportunity for everyone also, the technical and the economical feasibility varies by the application as well as the ge geographic regions. And the cost implication go beyond just packaging material, price, and conversion cost. Any change of the packaging material or the design is, uh, will, will, be, will have a big influence on the overall blending strategy strategy of the brand owners so for example for coca-cola they are trying they're planning to um, collect and recycle every bottle that they sell globally by 2030 and for unilever they are pledging to have a waste to have the waste associated with their products and, and ensuring all the plastic packaging is designed to be reusable recyclable or compostable by 2025. So this is some of the points for all the converters, all the end users to be think about. Okay, that's it. Mention about the recyclers. Um, Dr. Jackson, can you tell us how, what, because with Philippines, the, um, there is a um, big problem with recycling, but also a big um, push from the government to um, make the recyclers to, to incentivize the recyclers to be more active, right? There are, I think, two programs that are focused on uh, increasing the recycling. Um, how how much percentage of the of, of the waste is recycled? Uh, I think one by twenty twenty five and one by twenty thirty five. Could you tell us maybe a little bit how um, the Philippine government, how the Philippine industry is planning to deal with that? Actually, it's not an initiative of the government. It's more of the initiative of the multinational companies like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, 
um, Nestle. These are their prerogative to uh, reduce uh, the wastage by increasing more recyclable materials. Now, the problem now with uh, our uh, government is that um, up to now, we still don't have what we call uh, incineration. Waste could have been changed to energy by using waste to energy um, factories, like uh, in several other countries. But Philippines, we still don't have that waste to energy facility wherein we can also use the uh, recycled waste products instead of going to the landfill. Now, what happens, the, the collection of recyclables is now very, very low. People are just throwing things out. So we have to incentivize uh, people to do recycling. But this is not done by the government. This is done by private sector. One is by Unilever, wherein uh, they have a lot of sachets. So this sachet, they tied up with a, a local company wherein you can give the sachets there. And then that company is tied up with a telecom and they give you free free text messages with your phone. That's an interesting so now, incentive program. Yeah, so each, each sachet is equivalent to five text messages, right? Uh, I think that's a, that's a very good incentive. That's a very good idea. Something that could really work all around the world because when consumers get something back, that is um, the best incentive because for many people, um, just the knowledge that you're helping the environment, right? That 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 you you know make the it's not enough to be actually active. But when you get something, even something small, but something useful and practical, that is a very very um, interesting solution. The other, I guess, it would be using that um, WISS, the, the the washable ink sleeve, right? The, the system that could uh, help uh, for the companies, incentivize the companies. Um, Mr. Henking, can you can you hear us now? Oh, okay. Uh, could you please help uh, tell Amber to? Um, okay. Uh, so let's let's move to the second question. Um, what innovations uh, do we see for the shrink sleeve packaging in the near future? Uh, let's start, Mr. Tommy. Okay. Uh, in terms of innovation in shrink sleeve packaging, it must be, be uh, divided into three categories uh, the film and printing and the shrink sleeve machine. So, firstly, for the film, uh, which I have talked about, will be mainly focused focusing on the sustainability of the material. So I, I, I said that there was, there's a new a type of PET that have two solutions. And one is flo floatable PET, which you can float on water to uh, help recycle process. The other solution is that um, it's a modified PET that use uh, washable ink and also, this allows the label to be recycled with the bottle at the same time, but without the contamination. So this is the two solution for for the material. Then get to the printing. The printing now, most companies focusing in uh, digital printing, so which uh, allows your label to connect uh, with your consumer digitally. Like also, you can incorporate many different kind of uh, <clears throat> um, marketing campaigns. Like you can also inter integrate like VR or AR with the printing on, on the label. So this is some of the innovation that is happening right now. And for the machine, the machine now like, mostly focusing on down gauging of the material, which uh, but this uh, currently on the market, there are only few supplier can supply to supply the, the, the machine that can run thinner material. Like this is one of the supplier that can do uh, this kind of application. So for, for my suggestion, if it, you want to um, achieve the sustainable uh, goal, it's better to find 
uh, a total solution provider that can integrate uh, the film problem, printing problem, <coughs> and the machine problem all together. So this can save you a lot of cost and time for you. Well, certainly. I mean, when we don't need to waste time and energy for mm -hmm. going to other places, it, it helps yeah. uh, with, the, with the bottom line. Um, Dr. Joseph, maybe you can tell us what do you think, what innovations mm -hmm. are the Philippine market uh, is looking forward to? What is the, the next big thing that you think will come with the packaging in the Philippines? Do you think? Do you think the the like uh, like Tony said uh, the augmented like the QR codes that can show you on your uh, smartphone maybe the the product origin or the ingredients origin or uh, is it a fair trade product or things like that? Do you think this is something that um, will grow big? Um, although we are a very techy uh, country, almost all uh, Filipinos have uh, cell phones and. Uh, smartphones at that but uh i don't see it um at the moment you no know, people that are uh, doing things uh, using qr codes uh in their in their purchases or something uh uh for information or gathering in of the product but uh what we see in uh in the packaging industry is newer designs well because uh, what we are is uh, we are what we call um, a sari sari or uh, a small store country wherein products are mostly available in your neighborhood. So we are a country of uh, small items. We are not used in buying big bugs. So we are, we are looking into things that we can uh, develop that are in a uh, better packaging right now compared to what thailand is having they are much much more advanced in the packaging design uh, we just had uh, a new packaging center which is uh, start, uh, built up by the government to help small companies improve their packaging we are much behind in to, to sad, sad to say what we are behind in packaging design we rely a lot in multinational companies and other other countries as our benchmark so now we hope that with this new packaging center that the government has built up, we can now improve our packaging, our own packaging, uh, so that we can be at par with other nations like you know Thailand. Well, I think for something like this, exactly companies like they think um, is a very good solution because they can offer small small companies that want to become better um a solution for the design right they can help with the design they can help with with, with material so they can go in there and say okay so you're selling let's say a juice only in luzon right and you want it to expand you want to become a bit better no you want to design label that um will show the benefits of your product better well right so so um i think that kind of center and inviting not only the huge companies um but also yeah. Uh, the one like the one-stop solution suppliers that can help with the whole supply chain development that is a good answer okay so let's uh see the which i think will be also interesting because um this is the the key uh the key point of, of this um of this whole webinar let's say so what are the most common problems that manufacturers encounter with drink leaf packaging which, as we know, is the uh, most popular packaging for for beverages, and um, how how we can help them, um, Mr. Tony? Can you uh, <clears throat> for this uh, question? Uh, the typical problems that have been faced by all the end user or the brand owner will be something like uh, low production efficiency, or poor sleep quality, and sleep orientation, or the lack lack of knowledge for a uh, spatial film for different applications and also the sustainability sustainability of the packaging material and spend, spending too much time and cost looking for the machine and string sleeving string sleeve supplier separately so my suggestion again it's better to find a total solution provider that can solve the problem altogether so this this can avoid supplier um to blame the other supplier for 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 
like problem of the film or printing. They might be blaming to each other for that is true. More yeah. more more companies you have in your supply chain, they can always say, Oh yes, we, we couldn't uh, print your labels yeah, because yeah, they yeah. didn't give yes. us the material. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. already sent the material, so it's therefore yes, yes. so yeah, definitely um centralizing the the, the your your partnerships uh, with with the supplier to, to one supplier that can provide all would be a good solution. Um, what are the other uh, potential problems um, with the shrink sleeve packaging at the moment? I think um, the other problem with the shrink sleeve will be that uh, they have a problem with uh, the efficiency because this is because of the temperature at the local region. They, they don't know that uh they have to put this kind of string sleeve in a certain uh environment temperature so, so from the knowledge the, yeah. the know-how yes maybe maybe the solution would be to like offer from your side uh some kind of academia like a training yeah, yeah, yeah. like come to us and we can we can show you how to do it better right yeah that's one of them because the storage condition of the material is also important because sometimes they think uh if the product production efficiency is low, then they sometimes let's just blame the machine. But actually, it's because of the material has a uh, deterioration because of the temperature or or because you have storage for too long, because you also have the expiry date for, for the material as well. Yeah. I mean, you, can, you, can, you know, if you, if you don't store your wine, you know, properly, yeah, yes, then, yes. you know, Yes. Okay, I think that's a, that's a very easy answer yes. um, and uh, something that we were right experts that we here have um, could be amended very easily. So let's see uh, the last question of this small panel discussion today. And that question would be, which sustainability trend is making the most impact on plastic packaging and how will uh, this or can this benefit food and beverage manufacturers. Uh, Dr. Joseph, could you take this question first? Okay, uh, for us in the World Packaging uh, Organization or Asian Packaging Federation, we, we talk about not just sustainability, but sustainable development. When we, when we say sustainable development, it's the ability to meet the needs of today without compromising the needs of the future. Okay, because sometimes uh, they miss uh, uh, the point of sustainability and the sustainable development. Because uh, we have, for example, uh, by the use of paper, we're cutting trees. But if you maintain planting trees for use of the current, then you are not compromising the needs of the future. That is where sustainability and sustainable development comes in. Now, it has a very big impact on uh, packaging, uh, especially for plastic, wherein a lot are now being recycled and uh, being reused. Uh, biodegradable plastics are much in demand because we don't want those uh, non-biodegradable things that are being left in the trash or in the in the landfills that are that takes hundreds of years to decompose and developments in this type of uh, industry wherein uh, there's a uh, degradation in plastic or the recyclability of plastic is very much in demand and uh, we should continue the research on these things as it will benefit the food and uh, the beverage uh, manufacturers uh, Mr. Tani, would you like to uh, share a little bit your opinion on this topic? Yeah, I think uh, for this sustainability trend, uh, would be that the, the government imposing all the all the uh, policy that want to <coughs> uh, want, want to uh, uh, try, try to change all the material to recyc recyclable material or re or reusable material. And this will force all the converter to change their uh, manufacturing process, and this will, will also push push all the all the supplier to upgrade their product, their their machine, and so this will also 
uh, helps the economic uh, positively. I think that's what I think. And also, how is this benefit to the uh, the food and beverage manufacturer? Is that uh, when all the manufacturer start to switch from traditional material to the sust sustainable material, this can significantly uh, increase their brand image as they, they are helping uh, uh, saving the environment and also give a very uh, positive uh, influence on, on the market as well. This will also drive the economic of the new uh, sus sustainable market as well. So that's this, what my, my opinion, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, it would seem uh, to me that there is no really downside to, the, to become sustainable, right? To either because there's a marketing benefit that yeah. you, 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 your brand looks, okay, we, we're taking care of environment. We're not doing anything mm -hmm. wrong. Um, the materials are becoming cheaper and more accessible as well, mm -hmm. right? So that is also okay. Um, can we, so can we try to find out why um, so many companies still are not um, going fully into that? Uh, Dr. Joseph, maybe you can, what, what do you think is the element that stops currently uh, companies from to switch from switching uh, to more sustain, sustainable um, production at the moment? First is, uh, first consideration is cost. Uh, and also, uh, it depends on where, where you live at, which country you live at. Labor cost is a, a very, very big issue. Uh, so uh, there are places where, where labor costs are so high that uh, automation is much more cheaper, right? But here, where labor cost is very low, most of the manufacturing companies still do manual packaging. For manual uh, operations, because they can maintain a low labor cost, so it's a, it has a very big impact. Also, the high cost of electricity uh, for manufacturing uh, companies is a big impact in uh, using newer technologies. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, let's say um, the machines from the thing is very, very good, no? high speed, very, very nice. But, um, and it's it's very nice to have uh, this type of equipment that can meet uh, big volumes and lower product, uh, lower, uh, higher productivity. But um, uh, it would be only affordable by probably uh, high volume customers. Small, medium companies would rather have you know, manual manual packaging, manual operations, uh, because we have a very low labor cost. But if we have a high labor cost, it will we can now uh, capitalize on this type of equipment, because in the long run we it will be it will become cheaper. Uh, materials are cheaper, even though they, the machine is expensive, but materials will be cheaper. Productivity will be higher, uh, and all those things. It has a very very good positive. Um, impact if uh, these things are all uh, get get together um, yeah i mean that's well that was definitely uh, very nicely uh, dissected uh, the problem um would seem may maybe maybe uh, another solution could be to offer uh, some solar uh, or renewable energy um to produce electricity that the companies could use to use uh, those better kind of machines right because mm -hmm. If the if the electricity is the problem, maybe you can um, uh, provide them with uh, solar panels to to, to charge them. Yeah, that's <laughs> something that to think about. <laughs> yeah, because it's all about okay. So there's a problem, right? And the problem is, for example, the access to electricity to to cheap um, to cheap um, reliable electricity. So maybe maybe that's a uh, some some solution. Yeah. Um, and with that, yeah, labor uh, cost is really you know hmm. uh, if you're if you're aware, labor cost in the Philippines. Average is just around 400 to 500 pesos. That's only $10 per day. $10 per day. That's not very day. high. <laughs> See, so I can now pay probably 10 or more people. Uh, if I'm a small company, uh, I cannot afford the uh, big equipment. But, you know, but if the uh, labor cost is high, I would now think 
it would be wiser to buy very good machines because productivity will become high, all those things. But uh, labor costs here is uh, still cheap. Uh, but good to, good to say that we have a lot of multinational companies here who are using uh, high-tech equipments and up-to-date technologies that are available, you know, like these uh, high-speed applicators. This Nestle is very, very big here with several, I think they have six factories here. Um, also uh, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, they have this type of equipment. Okay, uh, I think that uh, with this optimistic uh, uh, view on the future of, of uh, increasing the, the sustainability and recyclability, um, I'll give the floor back to my colleague Jack, um, who will uh, conclude this. Um, this presentation. So it was very nice to meet you all, and uh, I hope to see you soon, Mr. Joseph, um, in Philippines. Back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Jack. I'm back to the floor with you, and uh, our next section will be the last uh, lucky draw session. And but before I go to the lucky draw session. I believe that there are several Q and A questions, and I have checked who asked those questions still here with us, and they're looking for the answer from Mr. Tony. So I, I think Mr. Tony you would like to answer those okay. questions maybe shortly to them because I checked already; they are here to wait for your okay. answer. Okay. And also, uh, Doctor Joseph Jose, I mean uh, Doctor Joseph Hoxson and uh, Hanky Wibawa, it's okay uh, for your now and I really appreciate your joining with the panel discussion and also Mr. Henke, your great presentation. Really thank you for that. And maybe uh, we can say goodbye now. You can turn off your camera and microphone and you can still stay with us with our webinar. Okay, so see you later. Okay, so Tony, maybe we try to publish uh, these several questions. I think... Uh... This one? Yeah, let me publish this one. And this question is asked by the Dodi householder. Oh, okay, for this question, do, do you mean the, the bundling of the bottle? Because shrink wrap is not, I think you don't mean shrink sleep. For shrink wrap uh, material now, mostly they use the PE film. Uh, so I there's no problem with the recyclability of this this uh, film. I don't think you have to change to biodegradable because now for biodegradable film, they uh, still have some controversy about this because you have to make sure if it is home compostable or is an industrial compostable. This so I think uh, this there's some difference. So for now, I think you can stay with the PE film. There's, a, there's no problem with uh, this kind of film. Yeah. Yeah. And also I noticed that the, this doodle householder, I see your reply in your chat room. It's also, we, we remember your question. Okay. So very thank you, Tony, to answer that question. Okay. And also congratulations to your celebrating in your 122 mm -hmm. Independence Day. Okay. Congratulations. Go Philippines. <laughs> Okay, what about let's jump to the next question? And there's a, you can, you can see, right? Yeah. Uh, what is the maximum tech temperature? Uh, I can't remember this one, so I think I will skip. I, I, I think I will, I will save this question and I will, I'll send it to you afterwards. Yeah, Fendi, yeah. you want to, sorry, for that question, I totally need some, do some research and go back to you, okay? Maybe yeah, you can try to, engineer. yeah, you, you, you can try to contact with Tony. I will leave the uh, information later, okay? You can copy that and you can contact uh, Tony, okay? Tony can see other questions on it. We can, we can, we can put fragrance and flavor on it. Uh, for now, uh, this one? From yes, for this question. You. Yeah. Uh, for now, I only know that some customer put this fragrance or flavor on the cap, but it's, it's not really good for, for food. So for sleep, he said, we, it, it, this person says for sensory ap appreciations. For sensory appreciation. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. This is, so you want to put this on the label, right? Uh, honestly, uh, we haven't, for our current customer, they haven't put this on the label yet, but I have customer 
asking for this. But I think this will influence the recyclability of the film. But can we, can I answer you uh, like after this event? Because I think I have to check also with our R&D and, and see if we can do this uh, on the film. But f for my, uh, un my knowledge, I, I, I don't have any customer that, ha that has put this on the, on the label yet. Not yet, yeah. Yeah. Not yet. It's three, three, two. But years. it's a very interesting uh, idea. Yes. Yeah. There are still three to four people that for this Ryan 10 globally. And also Cynthia. Yes. Yeah, any limitation? Okay, is there? Okay, Cynthia. Cynthia? Okay. Cynthia asks, is there any limitation for string sleeve packaging? Is it can be used for any button for or any material? Uh, basically, there's no limitation for the string sleeve packaging mm -hmm. in no. terms of the bottle shape or the material. So don't uh, don't worry about this question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. So what about from Andy? Is it possible for using some product and bottle size? Like you can, you answer a little bit that mm -hmm. before, right? Who's using some product and bottle size? What What do you mean by this? No, no okay, I think there's no problem with this. Yeah. yeah, there's no limitation on this. And also this one from Mary Jo is ultra thin. Yes, if one. Yeah, it, it can, we can do it as stable as the thicker film like floating microphone. There's no problem with this. And last one, oh no, next one is from Amber asking about a browser question. So I believe you answer all, almost all the questions yeah. to the attendees. So thank you very much, Tony, for your time and your insights sharing as an expert. Okay. So it's very, thank you. And also thanks to, uh, I'll give my thanks to Mr. Hanky and Mr. Dr. Joseph Hoxon uh, from Philippines and Indonesia with us to share their insights too, as an expert to this uh, food and berry and packaging industry. So now I believe it's time uh, for for Tony to leave. I will uh, keep doing the the rest sessions as okay. a lucky draw and also some announcement later. So Tony, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Great you everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. So now. make a list to have a lucky draw and i would like to open this uh i would like to share this share my browser to you okay while i do this uh, random picker program see this these are the these are the lists for those who had asked the questions during this time this webinar and some of them are really really great question and open our eyes too and now i'll pick like uh two of the two of them okay because uh i promise that i will open can i open this one wait a minute okay sorry for that the, the problem with the loading problem Anyway, I'll draw two lucky attendees who asked the valuable question, who has value, asked valuable questions, okay? So let me run the program for number one time. Who is the winner for the... Mr. Matt, you have won our ticket. 
for the twenty dollar twenty dollar price. So thank you for asking the question. I'll pick another one. Amber, okay. For I think for the time for to waste so many so many time and the delay, I would like to draw. I asked her permission, and I would like to draw two more. Okay, for the price. Uh, originally we have draw two only, <laughs> so let's draw two more. Okay, we have Fendi Yuanto. Fendi Yuanto, thank you for your question, and you have won one price. I'll pick another one. The last one for our uh, asking question price. <laughs> the the last one who won the prize is Asil Nils B. Castillion. I hope I pronounced your name right, I, but I don't think so. Anyway, congratulations to you win the prize, okay? And secondly, I would like to say uh, we have another two prize for 100 USD dollar, which is the strongest detective helper for for the previous market survey. And I would like to thank you for that. I'll open the survey mem. Okay. For well, this more than uh, 50, 60 people who have done this survey and support our webinar today, you can see your names in that. I'll pick two, the biggest prize today, who will win 100 USD dollar. Okay, I'll pick the name number one. I hope it's me. No, sorry, I just kidding. I didn't do the survey. The number one lucky guy is Nyu Yuan Soi. I think this is, uh, uh, I believe this is a Vietnam name, Vietnamese name, right? Who win the, win the biggest prize today. And also I'll pick another one. The last one who win the 100 USD dollar prize. The winner is Anu Sean Warasitiku Wong. I cannot, I really cannot pronounce this long name, but congratulations, you have won our under USD dollar prize. So that's all the, all the uh, uh, lucky, lucky attendees today. I hope you enjoy our event today. And last, for the very last, I have to say thank you very much. I'm not sure you and I, we also learned a lot from all our speakers today. To summarize our discussion, we have learned the market trend and the packaging solutions that are sustainable and the measures taken for both technological and non-technological levels to convert this challenging time into opportunities. And also we have learned some preparation to the future planning. You can find out more information about us, our speaker in our digital folder. The digital, digital folder in, is in the upper right of this corner, this webinar corner. You can click at the event board and you can see there's a share files. You can see some digital data in it. And for the very last, I would like to say thank you all to stay with me for that long. Once again, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for support our uh, distinguished speakers and congrats to those who have won the prize. If you have any further question, as I said, during this time, you haven't answered, you haven't got answer yet, or you have more question about your question, please contact Mr. Tony Wong. I leave his message here. You can see that. And please also join our uh, WhatsApp group. You can have more discussion in the group, okay? I'll try to see if I can open the group uh, for you. I uh, don't see the, the, the number. Anyway, you can. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for the business partner, Desa Singh. And thank you for your time today. I will call this a day. I'll now close in this webinar. Thank you all. Thank you for joining. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo, and thank you, Doodle, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, Joseph, thank you. Thank you for these people. We have still several people, really, oh, maybe more than half people stay with us since two o'clock here in Taiwan time, uh, GBT plus eight. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, team. Yes, team as a re really good moderator a while ago. 
he 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 lead this discussion in a very good way. Have a good day ahead. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you, Hoxton, for your time. Thank you. Really, yeah. While we do this international, globally webinar, we all have some problems facing. And but on the other hand, we are really happy to have this platform to discuss the uh, with the interesting topic and with the people all over the world. Please join our event next time. Uh, please stay tuned with our Ringo Trade Media and Media. I mean Ringo Trade Media. We will hold. Uh, a lot more this kind of webinar in the future and also we have hybrid event and the fiscal event in the future thank you okay goodbye bye bye and uh, once again congrats to those who win the prize our colleague will contact you okay because you all leave your message here all leave your information with us already okay we will contact you thank you uh Kun on New Yuan. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I know your surname, but I cannot I couldn't pronounce your first name. Yeah. Great, great sharing. I think so. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I saw still some people typing words. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. I'm now closing this one. Okay, thank you too. Bye bye.